hi. Hey, I was just, I was just thinking about profiles. This is my profile. When you look at the side of my face, that's my profile. Welcome to Art with Maxtivity. My name's Julie. It's time to stop everything you're doing, drop that TV remote control, and let's do some art. Today, we're going to be doing art that focuses on profiles. It's called silhouette art. Let me show you. Right here, for example, I have the profile of a witch. Notice her pointy nose with a wart on it and her pointy chin and her hat. She's not facing you like I am. She has her head turned, so all you see is her profile. Here's another one. Let's see if you recognize this character. You may have seen his movie, Edward Scissorhands. Hmm, looks like he's giving himself a little trim. And uh-oh, this guy lost his skin. Hmm, maybe he's friends with the uh, skeletons that we drew last week. But he isn't lonely, look, he has a friend. They're facing each other. They're both turned, so their profiles are facing us, but they're facing each other. I have another couple here. Maybe you'll recognize. The Bride of Frankenstein. Two more profiles. So you'll notice that these are cut out of construction paper, black and white paper. And we are going to do some of our own profiles today, but we're going to make them a lot more simple than these. These are rather complicated and some of these required an X-Acto knife and scissors to cut out. And we don't wanna do that because we don't want anyone to cut themselves. We're just gonna use scissors. So we're gonna focus on more simple profiles today. Ooh, I wanna show you one more. Can you tell what this is? It's a werewolf with a man inside of him who is going to turn into a werewolf. So basically a werewolf with the human and the wolf side showing. So you can get really fancy with silhouettes if you have the patience and the right tools. But like I said, we're gonna keep ours a little more simple than this. I was thinking we'd do something more along the lines of a witch, not quite so complicated as this one, uh, maybe a witch, something like this, maybe a ghost. Maybe we'll do a skeleton, but maybe we'll make them a little more simple than this one, unless you want to be more complicated. Kind of leave it up to you, but I'll show you some simple steps. So what we're going to need is um, black paper that's either cardstock or construction paper or sketch paper that's black. And white paper, I just used, um, whoops, there was something in there. I just used copy paper. And you're going to need a pencil. If you have a white pencil, even better, because it shows up really well. But you can see regular pencil on the black paper. You should be able to. And scissors and some glue for when we're all done so that we can glue it together. I don't think we need a pencil. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create this white oval that's going to be the background for our figure. So this is the background, the white oval. So drawing an oval can be difficult. I guess we are gonna need a regular pencil for this part. Um, you can just do your best to draw an oval Maybe you have something that's shaped like an oval that you could trace. I can't think of it, what that might be. It's just kind of shaped like an egg. So do your best to draw an oval shape and then cut it out. I'm gonna cut out this oval with my big scissors. You might have little scissors. It might take you a little bit longer. Okay, now that I have my oval,
oval. I think it's a little too big actually, Anna. Now it might work. I want my oval to be a little smaller than my black paper because I wanna be able to make a frame later to put behind it. So it's gotta be a little smaller than that. And, in, and this is, so this'll work. I'm gonna trace this and then I will know what size my silhouette needs to be in order to fit inside of this shape. So I'm tracing the white oval onto my black paper. We're not cutting this. We're gonna be cutting the black paper. All right, I've got my oval traced. So whatever I, whatever um, profile silhouette I put in here, it has to fit inside this space. So like I said, I think we'll start with a witch. Let's have a witch with a pointy nose. So we're gonna start with the witch's nose and that's gonna be kind of just a point right here right on the edge and then we're going to go down and it curve out a little bit so we just have our pointy nose and then our top of our lip and then our mouth is going to be cackling so she kind of has a smile but her mouth is open and maybe her chin juts out a little farther than her lip and then we have her chin coming down like that so it's just shapes and lines, chin comes down. So we have the nose, the top lip, the open mouth, and the chin. Let's give her a little bit of a neck here. So this line just comes down, and then this one goes across, and another one comes down for her shirt. All right, now her forehead is just gonna go up just a little bit we want to leave room for some hair and a hat. So for her hair, right here, we're just gonna have a line that goes down and curves up like that, kind of a little hook, like a little claw. And then another one that's a little bit longer, another little claw shape. How are we doing? Are you following me so far? You might have to make a couple of tries. I had to try more than once to make it fit inside of my oval. So now her hat, we're gonna make a shape like a finger pointing there. Goes almost to the very edge. And then right about here, we're gonna curve up. Looks like a baseball hat. Then we're gonna do another little curve out and another curve up. And make sure you leave room here because we're gonna come out and swoop up and around like that. So, Think of an imaginary line going right through here. See, that's where the back of her hat would be. So we've got this big hook curve coming all the way around here, but it doesn't touch this line. There's a little space. And then we'll do the back of her hat. It goes right off the page. And we'll give her some messy hair. Maybe her hair goes off the page too. All right. Now, if you want to give your witch a snaggle tooth, you could do that. You give her one on the bottom too, if you want. If you want to give her a, a big wart on her nose, you can. I think that's pretty good. And like I said, if you have to try more than once to get it to fit, that's fine. Give it another try. So when we cut this out, we'll flip it over and we won't see any of the lines on this side. So it's okay that there's a line here and here. That's okay. If you make a mistake, it's okay because you're not going to see it. You're going to flip it over 
and all they'll see is the clean side of the picture. That's all that people will see on once you glue your silhouette together. So I'm going to go ahead and get my paper out of my book, and I'm going to cut this out. I'm just going to cut... I'm just going to cut around the outside edges. I'm not going to cut um, across the hat or anything. We're gonna see how this looks when we put it on our white paper. And it's okay that I didn't get her entire hat. Oh, whoops, I guess I should be cutting this. It's okay that some of her hat went off the page. You'll be able to tell what it is. We don't need to see her entire hat. Some of you might have more cutting experience than others, but it's good to practice cutting things out. It helps you to develop your fine motor skills. Helps you to get better at cutting things. I'm gonna go over that. Hmm, let's see. If you wanna give your witch a droopy nose or um, sharp teeth or no teeth, you can modify it to be however you want. Maybe you want your witch to be frowning instead of smiling. You could do that too. And maybe you have a different style of cutting things out than I do, and that's just fine. Cut it out however best works for you. I'm gonna cut that. Oh, I forgot this little piece right here, right up here where her hat curves. I gotta cut that. Oops, not quite. Okay, now you can still see all the lines, right? But not when I do this. Get my oval and I turn her over. <gasps> Look at that. Whoa, and she fits great right inside my oval. Perfect. Okay, very cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to make a frame and then we'll do another silhouette. So as I said before, you want to make sure that your black paper is a little bigger than your oval, or maybe it's a lot bigger. I don't know, my black paper is kind of small. But you wanna have at least um, an edge about this size so that you can make a frame around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do my best to make a parallel line, a line that parallels the outer edge of my white oval. It's about the same, about the same width all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna cut that out. Works better if the paper is a little bit stiff, like construction paper or something a little thicker than just copy paper for this part and for your silhouette. Okay, so now I've got quite a mess going here. I'll turn this over too so I don't see my pencil marks. Nice and clean on this side. So now I'm going to need to glue it all together. Excuse me while I get some glue. So I have some pencil marks on this side of my white paper. So that's the side I wanna glue down. I don't wanna see those pencil marks. So I'm gonna put my glue on the side of my paper that has the pencil marks on it. Make sure I get glue around the edges of the white paper and then I will turn it over and stick it in the center of the black paper. Pretty close. All right, now 
I want to, I don't want to see the pencil lines on my witch. So I'm going to put the glue on the side that has the pencil lines. I'm going to put glue right out to the end of her pointy nose and right down to her chin and on her hair. So all those edges stick down. Then I want to make sure I've got her position where I want her before I stick her down. Make sure that she's on the white paper and then press down all those, the tip of her nose and the tip of her hat. I think I need a little more glue under the tip of that hat. Press it down all over and I have a witch silhouette. Isn't that terrific? And I could hang that up in the, uh, on the wall or on the fridge or on the window for a decoration. Now, if you don't want to do a Halloween one, you could do, you could do just a regular person if you wanted to hang it up all the time and not just on Halloween. That would be fine too. So we're just going to do one more. And I think I showed you earlier the werewolf. We're not actually going to do the werewolf. We're going to do a much simpler, just a wolf. So we're going to start with our oval again. You might need a parent or a big brother or sister to draw the oval if it's too hard for you. Um, or maybe you are a big brother or sister and you can help your younger siblings draw an oval if, if they're struggling with that and you're all doing this video together. So I think mine's a little misshapen. I'm gonna cut off a little edge there. All right, so um, first you wanna draw your, cut out your white oval so that you can trace onto your paper so you know what size your silhouette needs to be. You have to keep it inside that oval so that it fits. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a V right here, an angle, not really a V, but an angle real close to this edge and more than halfway up. See, this is about halfway across my oval. So look where that shape is compared to the halfway mark in your oval. It's right on the edge, a little bit above halfway. That's gonna be the opening of our mouth. So then we're going to go up here. We're just making it, we're just making kind of square shapes right now. We'll add more detail later. So right now we've got kind of this square shape. So from the V we went up at kind of an angle and then back down this way. And we want to stop right about in the middle of the oval. See, that's about the middle. And then we're going to go back up and down. And I'm just going to draw an eye here so you can see what we're doing. See how we're doing this? This is the top of the wolf's head. And then his forehead goes down a little bit and his snout comes out. So if you wanna catch up with that, go ahead and erase if you need to. His ear is really just kind of an extension of this line all the way to the edge of the oval. So really it's just kind of a sloping line, maybe a straight line is okay if that's easier for you. And then we're just gonna do another point or an upside down V, kind of a triangle right here that kind of swoops up a little bit and down. And that's his ear and his back. So we've already got, so if you look at the shapes, there's just a V here and then a long line that stops and goes down right about in the middle of the oval. Then it goes back up and down and another V. These two Vs are almost exactly across from each other. It's good to look at relationships when you're drawing and go, hmm, those should be right about across from each other. So I know I'm in the right spot. All right, let's do the bottom of his chin. So his chin could be another, just to make it easy, we'll just do a straight line down. We'll flush it out later. We'll make it curve later not going to be as wide as his nose. His chin is skinnier, narrower. And then it's going to be another line that curves, diagonal line that goes like that. So we just kind of have a 
geometric kind of rectangular shape right here. And then we're going to, just to make this easy for everyone, we're gonna make a line that goes all the way down to the bottom like that. So we have a basic shape of a wolf. And if you wanna cut it out just like that, you can. But if you wanna add some more details, you could add some fur by doing some little, looks like a Christmas tree. Some little Christmas tree type um, furry tufts of hair there. And you could go all along the bottom so that there's a little space when you glue it onto your white paper. You could put a little tuft of hair back here too, if you wanted to. And you could give him a tooth, a sharp, sharp tooth. And maybe even a tooth on the bottom. And I like to make his nose a little more rounded. Depends on your skill level here. You wanna round him out a little bit. And I like to make his mouth a little more shaped. But you don't have to do that. You can keep it just the way it was. Maybe you wanna give him a little fur on top of his head. Well, I think that's as complicated as we wanna get. We're gonna cut a moon out also. So we're gonna go ahead now and cut that out. Gotta be careful going around all those tufts of hair. The more details you draw, the trickier it is to cut it out. So if you don't like cutting things out or if you struggle with cutting things out, you might not wanna make your drawing too detailed. You might wanna keep it more simple. And as I'm cutting, I'm kind of smoothing things and making them a little more, uh, giving them a little more furriness or shape. Now I have to be real careful cutting out his mouth that I don't cut off his tooth. get that curvy tooth and those snarling lips. All right. Now, how am I going to cut out his eye? Hmm. You don't have to cut out his eye. If you want to cut out his eye, I guess what you could do is have an adult help you um, or take a sharp pencil, and this is not a sharp pencil, this is a dull pencil, and poke a little hole in the eye so that your scissors can fit in there. And then you might be able to cut out a moon-shaped eye. Kind of tricky as you can see though. This is something that would work well with an X-Acto knife. If you have a grown up that wants to do that for you, but if not, you could just not do an eye <laughs> or try this method. That's not too bad. Okay, so let's see what he's gonna look like when I flip him over. Here's our white oval. Flipping him over. Oh, look at that. That turned out pretty cool, didn't it? Nice, and he fits just right in there. So if you wanna make a few adjustments to yours, if you feel like yours didn't turn out the way you want, you could go back and do some different, do a little more cutting. We forgot the moon. So that's just basically a little circle that you can cut out of your scraps of black paper and you can put it wherever you want. Here, here, here. And um, if you want to, 
You can put little scraps around it too to make it look like it's glowing, but that's up to you. Terrific. So we need to do a frame for this one. So I'm going to, once again, trace a parallel line. Oops, that's the wrong pencil that goes around. I'm not cutting a hole in the black paper that I make the frame out of. It's solid. I'm tracing around the oval and then I cut it out and it's a solid piece of paper. I don't cut the center out because I want to be able to glue that on. So I'm just going to use this one that I already have. So let's see which side. Oh, this side has pencil on it. So that's the side I want to put my glue on. Make sure I get the glue to the edges and kind of center it on my black paper. And then I want to be sure I put the glue on the side of my silhouette, my profile that has the pencil marks because I don't want to see those. Make sure I get it all out to the edges. And then I want to make sure I've got it centered and press it down. Now, I keep losing the moon. Here it is, here's my moon. Okay, so I'm gonna put the glue on the side that has the pencil marks and just put it right there. Terrific. So thanks for joining us today. Wasn't it fun to do art? We didn't even use paint. We didn't use crayons. We didn't even use um, watercolor or hardly any, any ink or anything. You can make some really cool art with just paper and scissors. And I think uh, you might wanna make some more on your own, come up with your own designs that you can make turn into silhouettes. So have a great day and a great week. See you next time.